Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Ray Song, and we are back with our Pokemon Violet playthrough. Um, we did just beat the Team Star, um, and now I'm going around and I'm going to look for one more boss uh, in this area. Or not, sorry, not boss. One more trainer in this area. Uh, and then uh, go get our reward. And then we're going to do stuff in the, um, in the actual school. Perfect. Oh, man. Man, that bear in the background, they gross me out so much. Maybe it's just because I have like, I've got like bad sinus issues. So. I, uh, I don't know, snot just really grosses me out because I've got such bad sinus issues. <sighs> All right. Nope, go away. Oh. Oh, it's one of the gross bears. Cuteness. I don't even know if I'm still in.
Maybe there is a trainer out here. Well, let's do the den. Hmm. Oh, nice. Lots of level ups. Aha!
Perfect, so that was our fourth trainer. If I can't even defeat a regular old student, how can I even make the cut for Team Star? On behalf of the Pokemon League, here's your lovely prize. Leaf Storm. User whips up a storm of leaves around the target. Okay. We're holding this challenge for other areas around Paldea, too. Stop by and try them. So before we head back to the school... I'm just going to take a quick peek at the Terra typing for the Pokemon that we have because I feel like one or so has a different Terra typing. Okay, so they're all normal. Okay, so Jolteon is an electric flying, flying type. So he's the only one. Jolteon's the only one that's actually got a different uh, Terra typing. I should get those two in here to level them up as well. Okay. So now I'm going to go take a look at our TMs. Craftable TMs first. Right, because Sylveon's a fairy type. So Leafeon, I'm thinking of getting Trailblaze. Let's see what Leafeon says. Leafeon wants to learn Magical Leaf. No, absolutely not. That's like. Okay. So Leafeon is now going to be ground.
I was really hoping one of them <clears throat> okay. We're going to go back to the school. I want to go to the Deli Bird location, which is this one. Nope, this isn't where I wanted to go. This is where I wanted to go. The deli bird. Okay.
Okay, so Sylveon is our lowest level. All right. So we're going to give this. Why can I not? Okay. And then let's see. See, and here's my issue, is that I can't get any of the flying moves that I have. To Jolteon, who has I guess we'll give this to Jolteon.
All right. Good morning, Miss Ray Song. What class would you like to take? Um, let's do art. Yes, that's the one I want. You'd like art with Mr. Hustle. Yes. Class will begin soon. Don't be tardy. Greetings. I am Hassel. I will be teaching this art class. It is a pleasure to meet you all. Now, let me be candid for one moment. I imagine that many of you will forget all that you learned in this class once you graduate. After all, you don't even you don't need even a basic understanding of artwork, much less a refined appreciation of beauty for most exams or jobs. So, is my class a waste of time for you then? I think not. At least I certainly hope it isn't. Think for a moment, all of you. What is beauty anyway? What makes something beautiful? The eye of the beholder. Interesting. Thank you, Raysong. Oh, and I don't mean to suggest that's a correct answer to my query. The important thing is that you all take the time to think about it. Think about why we might find beauty in a flower blooming on the side of the road, for example. Question why the sky is a different shade of blue when then the ocean or why the leaves change color ponder the windmills of artisan and how they move contemplate the chilling bite of the waters in cascarfa i'm sure you will find that every little detail of your lives will seem more vivid more impactful if you just take a moment to stop and think and i am certain that if you stop and truly appreciate the little beauties of this world it will help you it will help pull you through the days where your studies have exhausted you or when work has dampened your spirits. Uh, do pardon me for waxing philosophical. For waxing philosophical. Uh, you don't need to understand all that for now. To put it simply, it is true that one doesn't need art to survive, but it will. but it certainly makes surviving much more enjoyable. It is my hope that this class will add even a little bit of color to your lives. That's all for today. Next time, we'll try a more hands-on approach for to appreciating beauty. So taking this class does get us something for terotyping. We'll be able to change the terotype of one of our Pokemon. So we're going to go and take his art, his art class again. Hello, class. It is I, Hassel, yet again. In our previous class, we discussed what beauty is, which might have been a little boring for you. So today, I thought I would mix things up a little to pique your interest in art. Allow me to introduce our special guest. This is Professor Gibble, the assistant lecturer for today. Now then, Professor Gibble, if you would be so kind as to terrestrialize for us. As some of you may already know, a Pokemon can terrestrialize if you use a Terra Orb. Normally, Professor Gibble would be of the dragon type. But by terrestrializing, it succeeded in changing its type. So, class, what type do these lovely glistening flowers above Professor Gibble's head represent? The grass type. Excellent, Ray Song. Full marks for you. These beautiful flowers blooming above Professor Gibble's head show that it now has show that it has now become a grass type. The shape of the Terra Jewel above a Pokemon's head depends on the Pokemon's Terra type. 
To summarize, if an opponent's Pokemon terrestrializes during battle, observe a Pokemon's Terra Jewel closely to see which type it has become, to choose effective moves accordingly. accordingly. It is my sincere hope that today's lecture will help you achieve beautiful victories. The terrestrialization phenomenon is indeed a fascinating and deep subject to discuss. That is it for today, class. Thank you, Professor Gibble, for your help. And we're going to do art three. Hello class, it is I, Hassel, yet again. I've been told in my previous lecture about trustalization the terrestrial phenomenon was very well received. Thank you all for your kind words. In fact, Miss Dendra specifically requested that I impart even more battle knowledge to my students. So I have de decided today that we will take another look at how a Pokemon can terrestrialize. And of course, here's Professor, Professor Gibble to help us. Now then, Professor Gibble, if you would be so kind as to trust lies for us. Now that now, what do we have here? Last class we saw grass type trust lies but this time we have something of a different shape. Observe a terror jewel resembling a snowflake. Its dentrictic shape is stunning to behold. It's a little chilly standing so close to it. So, class, what Terra type do you imagine this jewel might represent? Ice type. Excellent, my song, full marks for you. The reason there's a snowflake shining above Professor Gibble's head is simple. It is now an ice type. And because Professor Gibble is currently an ice type, ice moves would not be very effective against it. Keep in mind, usually they would deal quadruple damage to Gibble. Now, here's some trivia about snowflakes. While snowflakes come in many shapes and sizes, most are classified as hexagons. Just think of it. Snowflakes falling from the sky, taking similar shapes without anyone saying they must. Do, not, do you not feel the great mystery of nature, the beautiful enigma we live in? And this is a bit of a tangent, but Mr. Jack's glasses are also hexagonal, aren't they? I also forgot to mention that you can change a Pokemon's Terra type at the Treasure Eatery located in Medali. Though I must say the cook is a little prick prickly, you'll need to get on her good side if you want her help. Now, come prepared for next class because it is time for your midterm examination. Thank you today, Professor. Thank you for today, Professor Gibble. So there are eight classes in all. So we're going to do all of the art classes today. So you can kind of see how they work. Um, and then we're going to go trust lies one of our Pokemon. Um, and yeah. So this might end up a bit of a longer episode, but we'll see. I do hope you're all ready because it is time for your midterm exam. Focus and do your best. And begin. What is the name of the gemstone that glows over a Pokemon's head when it terrestrializes? It is a Terra Jewel. When the answer to question one is in the shape of flowers, what does it represent? The grass type. What shape are most snowflakes classified as? A hexagon. Where is the eatery that allows you to change a Terra type? Medali. 
What makes something beautiful? The eye of the beholder. Time's up. That's it for today's test. Pencils down, please. I would rather not have students worry about passing or failing in my art class, but tests are tests after all. Anyway, good work, everyone. You can check your results at the front desk. It feels great to get a test out of the way, doesn't it? Let's look at your results. You must get three questions correct to pass the midterm exams and four questions correct to pass the final exams. Let's see how you did on your art test. You answered five out of five questions correctly. That's a passing score. Congratulations. Mr. Hassel asked us to give this reward to any students who passed the exam. We got five small candies. Keep doing your best. So we're going to go to our next art class. And that's another good thing about going to these classes is that at midterm you get something and then at the final you get something and they clearly don't take very long. So next episode will probably just be all this. Hello class, it is I, Hassel, yet again. I am pleased to say that everyone did very well on the midterm exams. As a reward for all your hard work, we have a special guest visiting us today. Now then, Brassy, please come in. Greetings. I am Brassius. I am an artist and I focus exclusively on grass type Pokemon for my work. Brassy is here mainly creates three dimensional pieces such as statues and the like. One of his major works in the installation is the installation titled Surrendering Sunflora, found in Artisan. Many of you who challenge the Artisan gym type are no doubt familiar with these sculptures. Yes, I do recognize some faces among your students. I hope you all understand how fortunate you are to be able to attend Haas's class. Old Haas is the man who saved me when I had lost all hope and given up on myself, but he never gave up on me. I do not exaggerate when I say that he is my mentor in life. It is precisely thanks to Haas that I was able to establish my current art style. Oh, dear Brassy, I have nothing against reminiscing about old times, but today I hope you will guide the class in a way only you can. Of course. Let's see, uh, why don't we discuss what half Haas mentions surrendering some flora. Can anyone here tell what my mood was when I crafted its detached expression? Uh, a sad move? Mood? No, no, no. Completely and utterly wrong. I made that sculpture. When I made that sculpture, I had surrendered all hope. I was prepared to give up everything. I had resolved to give up my life as an artist if that piece did not receive proper recognition. Hence the name Surrendering Sunflora. That's exactly it, Haas. When I started out as an artist, I experienced many hardships. I even became deathly ill and fell into a slump that drove me to desperation. I began worrying about only about what would sell. I was concerned only with fame and fortune. But all of my pieces during this time had no depth. They were all shallow trash. It was then that I met Hats, and he helped me realize how petty I was being. I'll spare you the details, but in the end, I was able to leave all that behind. And that is also why I crafted the Sunflora. Remarkable. I did not even know the full story until now. This kind of thing is hard to tell someone, especially when you are so close to when they are so close to you. Now, I don't doubt that you adolescents will often find your heads crowded with worries. My advice to you is simple. Be honest with yourself and do whatever your heart desires, so long as you don't cause trouble, that is. That is all from me. I must admit I am beginning to feel a bit embarrassed, so I bid you farewell, Haas. And farewell to your pupils as well. Oh, Brassy, I couldn't believe it. Such a wonderful class. Thank you. And he's crying. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Five.
Hello class, it is I, Hassel, yet again. First, allow me to apologize for losing our composure during our last class. I was so touched by Brassius' story that I simply could not contain my emotions. I'm sorry for making such a scene. I certainly got a very stern talking to from Miss Time after that class, yes. Anyway, let us shift gears and dive into the material for today's class. Now, have any of you heard of the Ten Sites of Paldea? As the name would imply, there are ten sites in Paldea that are considered particularly beautiful. <clears throat> Among them, I would say that the Grand Olive Orchard is likely the most accessible. You can see the field after field of olive trees from the hills on the way to Cortondo. Two waterfalls are are also counted among these ten sites, Fury Falls and Casa Royal Falls. Then there's the peak of Gasledo Mountain, known as Paldea's highest peak. There's another cliff on Gasledo Mountain that's named after its rather unique shape. So let me ask you, my students, what is the name of the three-pronged cliff on Glasledo Mountain? No need to grasp, grasp at straws. Uh, Galsteo's grasp? Exactly. It looks like a hand taking hold of something, doesn't it, Raison? The three-pronged cliff is Galsteo's mountain is known, is in fact known as Galdeo's grasp. Though its shape is far too stubby to be that of a human hand, I imagine someone thought it looked like a Pokemon hand grabbing something. <clears throat> There's also the mountains in Area 3 of the East Province where you can get a good look at Levincia. Uh, it's particularly gorgeous at night. In fact, the view is so brilliant, it is known as the Million Volt Skyline. <clears throat> Here, it's quite a hot spot for days, and deservedly so for having such a romantic view. I imagine it's, what do the call, what do the kids say these days? A very <clears throat> fleek selfie spot. Of course, you may feel that not all 10 sites live up to their grandiose names. How often do we visit some tourist spots only to be disappointed? Not to say that you shouldn't visit them, only that you should keep your hopes in check. The important thing is to go yourself and see them with your own two eyes. And sometimes it's... <clears throat> and sometimes a disappointing experience can be worthwhile in its own way. Take a chance. Well, that's it for today, class. Thank you for your attention. Apparently, we can't do any more art classes. So, I guess that'll be it for this episode. Uh, don't forget that I post my videos every single day. Please like and subscribe, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. TTFN.